Now Nova Scotia is writing that historical injustice. Some of the Nova Scotia communities they built are there today, places like North and East Preston, Cherry Brook, Lincolnville, and Sunnyville. In the decades that followed, they were joined by Jamaican Maroons, a group of freed slaves exiled from the island nation, and others escaping slavery through the Underground Railroad. It announced 2.7 million Canadian dollars, dollar 2.2 m semicolon pound 1.6 m, in funding over two years to assist five communities to get clear title to land on which they live, help cover the costs and handle the bureaucracy. Most were given access to rocky, hard scrabble lots, often on the worst soil, in the maritime province of Nova Scotia. The family live in North Preston one of the oldest and largest black communities in Canada. The land they live on may belong to the Downies, but they don't own it. Canadian descendants of so-called black loyalists have long lived without title to the land they were given centuries ago. It's a problem that dates back to the 1780s, the dying days of the American Revolution. Black loyalists were former slaves encouraged by the Crown to fight with British regiments against American forces exchanging freedom in return for military service. But the lack of land titles has never been fully resolved. In late September, Nova Scotia's government took a step towards fixing the problem. A 2015 by Nova Scotia journalism students also helped bring the issue to public attention, profiling the Downey's case and others. It's a big step. After the war, about 3,000 of them fled to Canada, then British North America, on the promise of freedom and a farm. The NSBS began working on the issue in 2014, and has offered free help to residents who want to make a land claim. Nova Scotia Barrister Society, NSBS, Executive Director Daryl Pink, called the funding really significant. Like many families in historic black Nova Scotian communities, they don't have legal title to land that has sometimes been in families for generations. We didn't appreciate how bad it was, and how long it had gone completely unaddressed with literally no resources and virtually no progress being made, he says. The money comes shortly after a UN report on anti-black racism in Canada urged the province to do more to resolve the issue. It's been in her husband's family for much, much longer. But they weren't given the ownership white settlers received. Pink says he feels somewhat embarrassed that he initially didn't know much about the issue. Violet Downey, 70, and her husband, have lived on their land for 50 years. Their evacuation was compiled in the that recorded names and descriptions of the black refugees, who sailed from New York to Nova Scotia. That means families who live and pay taxes on the land can't legally will it to descendants, can't sell it, can't get a mortgage.